Frances McDormand won the Oscar for Best Actress by uh, Best Actress, and uh, she gave a speech where she had all the females who were nominated stand up and told all the gatekeepers in Hollywood to take meetings with them and hear their pitches for ideas. And then uh, she left with two words, which were inclusion writer. And instantly, it was turning on Miriam Webster, like the definition of inclusion, the definition of, of writer. A lot of people were asking, what is that? Well, there are sources who have kind of clarified what that is, including the Washington Post, which writes, an inclusion writer is a stipulation that the cast and or crew in the film reflect real demographics, including proportionate number of women, minorities, LGBTQ individuals, and people with disabilities. Big name actors who have leverage in negotiations could put the stipulation into their contracts and drastically change representation in a film. Yeah, I was sure that it was a sister of Ghost Rider. Ghost, <laughs> Ghost Ride the Whip. Everyone, everyone. Well, my wife was like, "Right, it's writer. Who's who's an who's an inclusion writer? We need female writers." <laughs> and it's like, no, a writer. We always hear the weird ones, which are like Van Halen doesn't want brown M and M, so take the brown ones out by hand. But as someone in our production meeting said today, if you can ask for brown M and Ms, you could also ask for brown people. <laughs> so. Now, look, it's uh, it's all structured in different ways, and it also depends on how much leverage you have. And kidding aside, uh, you can ask for different things, and you could ask for something as simple as, I want the film to be representative of America, so 50% male, 50% female. I don't know if you know this, that is what the country is actually probably about, 51% female. Uh, and, um, and, so, and they're saying, if you have power, Francis McDormand is saying, to all the stars out there, then use it for good. Okay, fine, get your brown M&Ms or whatever and get your fridge filled with caviar, whatever it is that you like and want, great. But also ask for diversity. And so it definitely depends a little bit on the execution of how you do that. But I think overall, it's a noble idea. If it's, it turns out that they already have diversity, great, mission accomplished, right? But if it turns out there's no reason not to have diversity and they don't, and historically, films have been packed with especially males, uh, let alone the issue of, of, of race and LGBT, etc. But they really have been massively packed with males, partly because men make the movies and men write the movies disproportionately. Right, and like 17% of films, I think, or some small number are directed by females. So it's not just in front of the camera, behind the camera, there can be more diversity, that's always a good thing. Whitney Cummings point out, pointed out that it was only gonna help films to have a more diverse repertoire. Can we go to um, graphic 63, which is a fact from the person who came up with this concept at the Annenberg School of or Inclusion and in, in Initiatives Director. Uh, St Stacy Smith, she said, the percentage of females on screen hasn't changed since the late 1940s. That's because small minor roles and supporting roles are very biased towards straight, white, able-bodied males. That's a staggering statistic mm -hmm. um, and one that just should stick in your mind when, when these things are coming. Yeah, and I just want you guys to understand why that's the case. So if you just heard what, what I just said, you might think, well, hey, if men write the movies and they're the directors, well, that's, it is what it is. No, it's not, it is what it is. The people who pay them to do that were also male. And it started back in the 1920s through the 40s to, to present day. And so since men passed those roles on to other men, it became a giant institutional advantage for men. So then it made it harder for women to break in. So now they are. Not, but apparently not nearly enough because mm -hmm. it's the same percentage as the 1940s, ago when this was right? Um, but as as you can tell with this movement, women are gathering up more power, and uh, I think Frances McDormand is obviously right that you should use it for good, for positive change. And so, look, if it gets to a point where now all of a sudden women are dominant and 68 percent of all the cast are women, and we need to fight for justice for men. We'll do that, yeah. right? But that's not where we are today. Right, the original wording was, as long as it's sensible for the plot, tertiary speaking character should match the gender distribution of the setting of the film. It's a very reasonable way to put it. Like Bridesmaids is gonna star women. Um, the Hangover, it's a bachelor party, it's gonna star men. But those third, those tertiary characters, why not have it representative of the place where it takes place? And then also deal with it behind the camera. You just watched the video by the Young Turks, the home of the revolution. If you'd like to get the full show, Come join us and become a member, tytnetwork.com slash join.